All right, so Jeskai Vadrak. So Vadrak is one of those cards where we tried it in standard and it didn't really feel like it worked well there. The card pool didn't really feel like it supported what this card was doing. And this card kind of has a tough requirement, right? So this card needs enough mutate things in your deck to trigger it with some consistency, but then it also needs a density of things that you can recast from your graveyard for value. And one of the kind of key cards that I think really makes this potentially work better in Historic than Standard is History of Benalia here. So not only is History of Benalia a fantastic card to get back with Vadrock, but History of Benalia, notably these Knight Tokens, are not humans, so we can mutate onto them. So this serves as both a way to provide bodies for Vadrock, while also providing a nice card to have additional ways to flash back, essentially, with our, with our Apex of Thunder here. So let's go ahead and pop on into a Historic event with this one. Just got some kind of generic -y, just kind of tempo things around it. Let's uh, let's see how this goes, huh? okay it can't uh can't play siren storm tamer on one unfortunately but the rest of the cards are good so we're definitely keeping snap tax is an interesting thought why does the bot why does the bot need to be updated can you tell me what the bot said that's incorrect when the when the historic queue comes back the bot will probably need to be updated but that that message is accurate I guess you could argue we could change it from expect it to come back to it will come back, but... Double shock, pretty awful here against uh, against what looks to be like a control deck. Although that's a wish claw. It's interesting. Yikes. Worth noting here that Knight Tokens have converted mana cost of zero, which means they do not get doubled from this. GNSX, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome to Glandia. Thanks for keeping me around. I think I'm going to elect to play around a sweeper here a little bit and uh, not play the Obosh out. Opponent just playing like Esper Pile, it looks like. It's all Esper cards they like.
I'm gonna put this under because it's the same stat line regardless and putting it under plays around uh, Elspeth Conker's death. What's going on Beansy? What are what are days of the week anymore? By the way, because I'm sure there's some people that do tech support in the chat. I haven't debugged issues on Windows in a long time, chat. My Windows system, since I switched to it, has been randomly coming out of sleep. When I put it to sleep, I, like, come down in the morning, and I know no one has touched my keyboard or mouse, and my computer's no longer in power saver mode. Any, any ideas where to even start trying to figure that out? Thanks for the eight months, Arsene. I appreciate that. Uh, there's no, there's no update scheduled. Yeah, I just, I actually just responded back to you, Object. That's what reminded me. Thanks for thirteen months, Gold Norio. Because the desk was sloped and your mouse was moving slowly. Is there a way... Is there a way to make it so the system only wakes up from sleep if I... If I press a key on the mouse? Because my... The, the, the mouse slowly moving could be... Could be it. On my Linux setup, it would only come out of sleep if I pressed a key on the mouse. Or key on the keyboard. You can just turn the mouse upside down. Well, that ain't that a hardware solution to a software problem. All right, let's force the jump block, I guess. In mouse properties, you can disable its ability to wake up the system. Sky Fox, thanks for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Probably done at this point. Just kind of flooded out here. They've got Azcanta flipped and Tefri going, so. Tefri could go tuck himself, right? So they had they had a sweeper. I think I probably want to see a full stroke here. I think I probably don't want Curious Obsession. Although I guess if I bring in Stroke, is bringing in Stroke worth giving up my companion in this matchup? Probably not. That command definitely says that my mouse is able to wake up my computer. So yeah, that that that, that might be it. I, I would believe the mouse's uh the table slightly slanted the mouse is triggering it. Uh 
That doesn't seem completely unreasonable. On my, on my Linux setup, it definitely, the system wouldn't wake up unless I pressed a key on the keyboard. We just take the opportunity to pierce whatever it is they have. Is, to, to, to continue ranting about Windows for a half second here, is the Windows configuration dialog in Windows 10 half finished? It's so weird to me how there's like this sleek looking settings panel, but then there's all of these like additional options buttons that like open these like old looking panels. I think I bottomed that looking for something that could generate card advantage in our set zones. Great. It makes no sense that everybody hates it. Yeah, they open the visual basic panels. I think if you're in the market for Lego, uh, Lego books alcohol and that's in your budget, that's a fine, it's a fine pickup. If you wish to see home, that's because Windows 10 is half new and half Windows 7. All right. Even though I need a fifth land eventually, I think we're just going to try and dig for some action here. Vadrock would actually be very nice. Tefri, we could, if they don't have, if they don't have exactly Dovin's Veto here, Tefri can force through. Ooh, I think I'd rather have Curious Obsession though, huh? Get some cards going here. Okay, that's decent. Gives us uh, protection for, protect our queen here. I have a spell pierce for a sweeper. Should they draw a second white source or have ritual to set? That's a great draw. Probably locks things up. Yep. Ain't, ain't nobody got time to cast spells on their own, Jared. It's gonna be a uh, hide behind our things here now. Maybe I'm supposed to spell pierce there just because spell pierce is gonna draw dead relatively quickly. That's a nice one. Gonna stock both my draws on this one since I have Siren Storm Tamer to protect it. Yeah, I think I'm happy with how that played out. Let's turn it back. History of Benalia is such a sweet card. Not gonna lie, I briefly forgot history existed, right? What um if I could look it up. What are what are Vadrock's mutate colors, by the way? He mutates for red, red, white. Another idea for Vadrock 
is there could be a Mardu Vajrak deck. Snap. Snap Dax is also red white, right? Yeah, so Snap Dax and Vajrak are both red white on their mutate. I wonder if there's like a red white mutate deck that we could maybe explore with History of Benalia 2. This card, this card's sweet, and I like that it provides a lot of bodies to put mutate things on. Yeah, Raptor, Raptor doesn't really work well with history, though, is the issue. That's unfortunate. Might get punished here for not playing, uh, not, not taking that land earlier. Probably should have taken that island. Yeah, it's probably greedy. No, the mutate egg isn't good under the principle of stop putting bad cards in your deck, silly. Play more good cards, you'll win more games of magic. So, we get to mutate Sea Dasher onto Siren Storm Tamer and kill Tefri next turn at least. So, we've got that going for us. Yeah, I think I lost this game for myself when I, uh... When I bought him that fourth land when I shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, we're just in here. Jet Horde Invasion's interesting. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, look, we got our guy. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. We'll use uh, opt on one here. Try and dig for lands. Something nice to note about Rodan slash Vadrak here is that he triggers when you mutate other things onto him. So we can just play this out as a three drop and then mutate C Dasher onto it to recast something from the bin too, which is nice. Hit the land at least. So got that going for us. Second Rodan's not terrible because we can mutate Rodan onto Rodan. Can also uh also have a backup in case they kill the first one. Worth noting too that Rodan's uh, text does not work if there's a Tefri in play, which can be unfortunate. Something to think about.
probably be at Nexus. Could be, could just be a ramp deck though too. I'm just gonna pass with Lookout's Dispersal up here. One of the things that's kind of fun with Rodan and the instant speed mutate creatures is that with your counter spells, you can use this to basically snapcaster a counter spell. So you can instant speed the mutate and recast Lookout's Dispersal. Hmm. I think we're just sitting. I don't know that we can really afford to sit here and not do anything. Feels bad. The fact, the fact that they're hitting land drops and we're not, and our clock is a little bit slower than theirs, feels rough. Maybe I was just supposed to see Dash or Octopus right away to start accruing cards. I'm not supposed to play this other one out after I see Shatter. There's a good chance they could have another one of them. Wizard's Retort or Neutralize? Maybe. Neutralize is interesting. I don't know what our... I'm going to be honest. I don't know what our mana looks like offhand in terms of casting Neutralize. Happy Sunday, Apathy. Thanks for 11 months. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, the fact that Neutralize lets you flash it back seems like big game. Rough. Yeah, we're just just super dead. There is a strong possibility that this deck is not uh not competitive. We've got we've got some neat synergies going on here, but the efficiency of what we're looking to do compared to some of the other things in the formats looking a little rough so far Tefri's good counter spells are good definitely better than our companion here um nexus is rough for bruise this i mean it's rough for bad decks if your deck doesn't have an efficient game plan or good disruption you're gonna get beat by the good decks that have a real game plan yeah Am I supposed to cut Pouncing Shore Shark against their Flying Sharks? Probably not. I don't really know what our trim is at this point. What if I just trim Opt because it's mostly filler? Maybe we do this. 
Small worry that cutting Opt means Rodan doesn't have enough targets to bring back. But I guess he still brings back history in the Planeswalker, so it's probably fine. So the three quarters of a year, Whammy. Welcome back. Looking forward to having the ladder back so we randomly O2 with things. We can give him a third try before, uh, before calling him quits. Hey, thanks for the 13, the 13 months, Galdriel. And congrats on, congrats on the first kiddo. Any first time daddy tips? Um, they only get harder as they get bigger. They're really, they're really easy up until they start to move. Until they're, until they're mobile, once they gain sentience. I mean, they're always sentient. They just don't always move around on their own. Once, you're, once your child is able to move, their singular goal becomes trying to play with everything that is capable of ending their lives. And your job as a parent is to make sure that they fail in that task. You're, you're basically like a goalie keeping them away from all the different murder machines that are present in your home. Stairs, outlets, cabinets, you know, just basically everything. Don't worry. I got Toddlers are like super drunk adults. It's a really apt comparison. Tables, yep, any furniture you can try to climb up on and pull down. All right, hopefully this knight can kill Tefri this turn. And if the knight, if the knight can kill Tefri, we might have a real shot this game. If they have a shark or a bounce spell or something here, or a sweeper, are gonna be in a lot of trouble. All right, we killed, we killed Tefri. Maybe these lookout dispersals have a chance to do something now. So they have 12 mana total. Which means they can nexus through lookouts dispersal, so can't counter that. It's also like not a big deal that they're nexusing here because they don't have any sustained sort of card advantage. So while watching your opponent take turns can be kind of dry and boring, until they have like a Tamiyo or an Azcanta going, they're really not accomplishing much with their extra turns. So we're attacking for two here. Part of me wants to mutate, but another part of me just knows I should hold up these counter spells. Next turn, I can mutate Rodan, get what's it called back, and still have uh, still have mana up to dispersal, which is nice. I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and Dispersal plus Spell Pierce this. Because I'm not going to have mana up for all of these next turn anyways. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a 2 for 1 here in their favor. Or we can get Mystic Disputed and feel bad about things. At least they're not doing a lot with this turn, right? So technically, technically got a, kind of almost a 2 for 2. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try again. Uh, 
That was that was quick. Let's try again. More car. Thanks for the eight months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Like I've said, I wouldn't mind if they gave Tefri the Oko treatment and rotated him out of every format immediately. I mean, I actually am of the opinion that Tefri, Tefri is more offensive than Tefri is more offensive than Oko. At least you had an elk with Hoka right. Yeah, at least you had at least you had something on the board, right? I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't expecting my history to have resolved, chat. It wasn't things things went better than expected. Now where things did not go better than expected is they have fires of inventions here, which is a little unfortunate. So that means my soft removal is not my soft counters basically don't work next turn. Although if they have Tefri into Nexus, if they have Tefri into Nexus, Spell Pierce is still alive. I, I agree, Bob. I think uh, both Narset and Tefri are pretty pretty okay as uh, pretty. It would be pretty okay as symmetrical effects, but one-sided prison cards are just kind of nonsense. Big big agree there. Okay, so at least we know they can't interact with this. We get to do this. And get our history of Benalia back at least. I'm gonna put it under so that way it's still a knight. This is a situation where neutralize or some kind of hard counter spell versus lookout dispersal is a big difference, right? These soft counters like spell pierce and lookouts that can be paid for are much worse against fires of invention. Yeah, Don just conquers stuff by putting it underneath as well. No time for a break.
Here, 3-3 three, three blocks the 2-2 two, two profitably. Does it? It's good. Our 2-2 our two, two is going to be a 4-3 next turn. We've got... Hi history is going to make these things bigger for the next two turns. Yeah, I agree, Wyatt. So far, so far, what this deck is doing does not feel powerful enough for Historic. And that's a pretty common thing you see, like, just because this format is slightly lower power level than things like Modern and Pioneer doesn't mean you can't play super low power synergy piles. And that's part of the problem with uh, uh, Mutate and Standard as well, right? Like, while the Mutate mechanic is neat and interesting, just the raw power level and the individual quality of the cards you, you're playing tends to be low in comparison to the other options you have available to you in the format. So giving up the companion again here. Bringing in some more disrupted. Do our best here to see if we can get under them. Trying, trying to get under people with three mana threats feels like a real challenge. I think, I think that kind of highlights the issue that this deck is having in these matchups. Like, we have this disruption, but like, good comparison to the mono blue tempo deck that we played recently that felt very real, right? The mono blue tempo deck has a lot more efficient threats in it. If uh, if that makes sense. And being, being able to get down threats on turns one and two and then hold up interaction from turns three plus feels like a big difference between that and this. And hey, we're going to have a mono blue-esque draw here, right? We get to go Storm Teamer into Obsession. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Stigal. The mono blue deck's like a very, a pretty budget deck to build, all things considered. And our last set, when we played it on stream, it felt very powerful. If we play it a second time and it feels good again, it's definitely going to end up on the website. Having, having Octopus and Curious Obsession, I agree, was a big step up for the archetype overall. Curious, sir, and curious, sir. Yeah, I, I agree, Stigal. Our last build not having the gin in it, the gin in it felt really good. I I actually wouldn't be surprised. So our conclusion at the end of our last set with mono blue was that you want your main deck to be mono blue, but you want to splash black for removal spells. And I uh, I think there's a good a good chance that like splashing black for removal makes your girl matchup pretty winnable. Being able to kill Ceratops is a big deal. As well as their other big threats that they get in under your counter magic. Alright, that's a touch late because I can't look out Dispersal on 2 right now, but... Pretty reasonable otherwise. Could Luris be good in mono blue? That's a really interesting question. Probably not because you have to give up Octopus. I think thinking on, on it for a second, my answer is no because of giving up Octopus. But I think Octopus is a bigger deal to give up than Borrower. And again, this is kind of the issue here we're talking about with this deck. I like 
kind of want to hold up disruption, but at the same time, I, like, need to be able to get pressure down. And, like, here, we're catching a good break that our opponent doesn't have a meaningful play this turn. The fact, the fact that our opponent didn't impact the board with their mana this turn is a big deal. It means we have a real shot here. You go blue, white, Luris. You can get octop. You can get staggering insight instead of octopus. That's an interesting thought. My head went to blue, black, Luris. But you're right. Blue, white would give you staggering. That's probably something worth exploring. Honestly, that sounds potentially very reasonable. Was hoping to draw a land there. We didn't. We got punished. And I guess I just pass at this point because I can counterspell or see dash your octopus. So I think we do this, hoping to draw a land so we can have a two mana piece of disruption. Uh, you could play something like Giant Killer in the blue-white build, Ninja Dave. Always lucky, except when we're not. Ain't that the truth? All right. Actually feeling kind of okay here. Opponent missed on some pretty key turns, I feel. Um, I'm going to let this happen. Yeah, blue blue white tempo with Luris sounds sweet. I would explore that if you're interested in the, mono, the blue tempo variations. <sighs> well, we were in an okay spot. Am I supposed to stroke that? <sighs> right on feels, feels magic 2020, man. Feels, feels magic 2020. Thanks for the thanks for the two thirds of a year, Vlad. I I think there's a good chance we're gonna be waiting till the fall. I think I think there's a good chance we're gonna be waiting for till the fall. As sad as sad as that is, I I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll do something and they'll kick, they'll kick things that need to be kicked before then. But Maybe, maybe the core set's going to have a bunch of fast lands in it and a Danto Vanguard and good cards that can get let aggro beat up control. No, Admiral. The 2-2 Choo -choo Grizzly Bear is not good against the Deafening Clarion deck, the Shatter the Sky deck, the Tefri to Bounce it deck. If they, like, weren't an interactive deck and had to, like, work around that card, it could be okay. But, like, the fact they just, like, incidentally have a bunch of ways to take it off the table already, it makes it just awful. Yeah, if they could just, like, put all ten fast lands in the summer set, that would be great. I would love those in Historic, too. 
But like, yeah, the, ag the aggro decks, two and three color aggro decks not having good mana is a big part of the issue with standard right now. I think changes like that aren't worth discussing, Celestia Champ, because they're not going to happen. I think it's kind of wasted effort. Lamenting. Lamenting what could or should have been isn't, isn't really helpful to what we're currently experiencing. How is this been? Kind of clunky and awkward. This is our third match with it, and we have yet to win one. This one, this one's close. We could, this this game could go our way, depending on what the rest of their hand looks like here. Interesting sequencing here. I think they'd want to activate Escanta before they play Fires. Probably dead. You think they might put lands in Jumpstart? That's an interesting thought. I suppose that's a possibility. We might not get another turn here. Yeah, I think, I think we're just dead. I'd like to try and queue into an aggro deck to see how this feels against something not combo-y. Man, mono blue's probably absurd in these events right now. There's been a lot of a lot of clunky clunky big decks that got devoured by a bunch of counter spells. Yes, jump jump start is a direct historic. The cards will not be standard legal. And in addition to reprints of older cards, there will also be brand new Magic the Gathering cards. I think they said 30 brand new cards. Yes, jump jumpstart is not legal in pioneer or modern, only legacy and vintage for paper formats. Tendo, Tendo Ice Bridge isn't really a playable land. Mana Confluence is great. Mana Confluence is what I've talked about. I would enjoy seeing in this format. Silly opponent, you activated my trap card. Honk that one. Burp, burp. Again, kind of just winning that game because we were mono blue tempo. <laughs> the games people keep conceding are because we keep putting draw spells on Siren Storm Tamer. Vivid lands. Vivid lands are tapped lands, right? I don't think those are very interesting. I think historic, a little bit, and standard definitely right now need lands to make aggro decks better. That the fundamental problem with standard... I think I'm just clicking some. I don't really know what the opponent's doing. I think the fundamental problem with standard right now is that the aggro decks aren't good enough, and in part they're not good enough because their mana sucks in the two and three color standard aggro decks. 
And in historic, while it's marginally better, it's still not great. Could also go the opposite direction and make mana worse for everyone. I mean, is it possible to make mana worse after we just printed Triumphs? We're going to have other dual lands in the format. Like, bad, bad mana tends to not be interesting. Undermined, thanks to the brand new Prime Sport. Welcome to Oaklandia. In my opinion, you'd much rather give people some type of payoff for being monocolor rather than punish them for being multicolored. Again, magic's more interesting when there's good payoffs as opposed to negative effects. You want to reward people for doing something sweet, not punish them. Thoughts on printing Blood Moon to punish these greedy mana bases? Calm down now, Saffron. Calm, calm down. We need back to basics. Uh, I actually think, uh, what's the one? There's a four mana red enchantment. Um, it's, it's called mana something. It deals damage to people whenever they, it deals damage to a player. Ma is it mana barbs? Whenever they tap a non-basic land for mana. Is it? I don't think it's mana barbs. Is it? Mana barbs is anything. Yeah, that's a bad design. There's a design that only put only deals damage for non-basic lands. Burning Earth, that's the one. That card was was playable in its standard format, and I think that's a good example of a reasonable hate card that, that does actually work to punish greed. There, there's still counterplay to that card. We get price of progress. This is what I think about your price of progress suggestion. Stop it. Get some help. Why did we counter Blood Sun? Because I had two counter spells in my hand and wanted to use my mana for the turn, and it traded one for one to do so. I also assume if they're playing Blood Sun, the opponent probably has um probably has some number of Lotus Field in their deck that could ramp them up down the line. I think we just pass here. Hopefully they escape Uro next turn and we get to pirate leak that. If we mutate shark onto a knight and put the knight on top, do can we bounce the ceratops? Yes, I believe so. That should that should in fact be how magic works. The mutate is the color of whatever is on top. What are lands, baby? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Top strategy tip, you should draw the correct number of lands and spells. A bold, bold move. They have Masterminds Acquisition in their teamer deck off of Gift. So they're like, they're definitely a Lotus Field deck, right? Just the old, the old double black card. So they're playing like Gift of Paradise and uh, 
and let us be able to enable that. Well, we got to do, we, at least we got to do the thing once, you know? We at least got to Vadrak back some history. Well then, um... Deck, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm done. Just to just to summarize here at the end, um, the what this deck is doing doesn't seem competitive in this format. Um, the big the big issue stems from the tension in the cost of your threats, like. Your cards being, your first play being three mana is not okay. In the decks where History of Banalia really shone over the years when it was competitive and standard, it was in decks where History was basically your curve topper as opposed to your first play. And I felt like constantly throughout the the games that we played there the theme of this deck was our threats are too expensive so we had to choose between holding up interaction or deploying a threat and like we'd deploy a threat and then they'd play a threat that was better than ours or we'd sit there and hold up interaction and then we wouldn't have any pressure and eventually they'd get through our interaction because we weren't pressuring them while we disrupted them and just felt like our mix of what we had going on here just really wasn't very good all right. Speaking of things that are likely pretty good, though, we're going to have our, I think it's our second or third run through of this archetype. It's our first run through since we got Cathartic Reunion, though. We're going to kick the tires on some Storm Herald combo here in Historic. Uh, coming up next, don't go anywhere. Thanks for hanging out, folks. We'll be back in just a few.